everyone, Jason here from JW Coaster Bits. Um, today we're going to be working on the new Texas Giant Coaster Cutouts. These are made by Print My Ride and distributed by Coaster Dynamics. It's the same company that does the Nano Coasters. Um, but these kits are a little bit easier to assemble than the Nano Coasters. Um, and also provide a little bit more detail. So the Nano Coasters that I have behind me are all about the track layout. Where these are more about the way that the ride vehicles look. Um, so as I pull the pieces out. Um, first off, you'll notice on the box, it shows that the base has a Six Flags Over Texas logo. However, the base actually has a new Texas Giant logo on it. Um, and so there's that piece there. Um, and then the rest of the wood pieces are here in cellophane. So I'll open this really quick and pull these out. Um, as I said before, these are a little bit easier to assemble than the Nano Coasters. Um, you'll notice some of the wood pieces actually just fell out of the, the frame there. So now we have all of the wood pieces laid out here. You'll notice a few of the wood pieces actually fell out of the wood. Um, but unlike the nano coasters, you don't really need any tools to put these together. A um, lot simpler to, to assemble, um, but typically a lot more pieces, so it may take a little bit more time. Um, to begin, I'm just gonna start grabbing these wood pieces and, and, and just simply pressing uh, the, the wood pieces out here onto the table. Um, you don't really have to keep them organized per se, um, since they're, they're not labeled or anything. Um, you'll just as you put it together, it's kind of like putting together a puzzle. You'll have to find the right piece. Um, but like I said, uh, for the most part, these just simply press out of the wood. Um, so I'll just quickly go through and do all of this. So now, as you can see, I have a whole mess of pieces here that will eventually become the new Texas Giant lead car. Um, so to get started, we'll pull out the instructions here and start looking for the pieces that we need. Um, the first step it looks like is going to be putting together a row of seats. And so um, simply look for the pieces here that, that kind of match. Um, so right there, um, we can also see that we're gonna be repeating steps one through three, four times. And so I can probably find all four of these seat backs here that we're going to need and lay them out in front of me, as well as the actual seats. To, to begin putting the pieces together, um, you'll notice there's these little tabs at the bottom and then little holes here at the bottom of this. Um, the pieces actually slide together fairly easily um, and then they click. Uh, you shouldn't need any wood glue to, to hold these together. Uh, I haven't, um, this, is, this is my second coaster cutout. I also uh, did the, the Dueling Dragons, Dragon Challenge one back there. Um, I didn't need any wood glue on that one. Um, however, some people have reported that they needed wood glue uh, to help hold it together. Um, I also, as you can see back there, I paint mine, um, which that may help as well. Um, and so that, that may be part of the reason as well. Um, and everything doesn't hook on 100% tight, um, but you can see I'm, I'm, I'm getting a pretty good connection here that, that as, I, as I snap these together, you know, you can, you can, you can shake them around. They're not, they're not gonna easily fall apart. Um, we got those in now. Um, the next step is to add uh, the, the side, uh, the armrest for the, the seat. So we'll grab those really quick. And then we may as well finish this seat. As you can see with step three, we need to get the little, the little leg bracket there, down there at the bottom. Um, so we'll find that piece really quick and snap that on as well. And there's the first completed seat there. So I'll finish these other three really quick. And there we have the four seats completed. Um, the next step here is going to be to attach two of the seats together. And so we'll find that piece there. And it appears uh, that we got a, a piece here that matches 
um, just like that. And so um, just putting this uh, like this, just match it to make the match the instructions here. We'll just kind of push the seat down into this piece with the with the four tabs on the bottom of it. You can hear that you get a pretty good click there with that. Um, same thing with the, the other seat next to it. Um, so there we have two seats connected. Uh, step five shows that we need to add the ends to the seats. So we'll find these end panels. Uh, these ones it looks like are rounded on the, the edges and they also have some laser engraved lines. Uh, so we'll grab that there and hook this one onto this end. And the other one onto the other end. Uh, the next step shows that we have a rear panel. It uh, looks like there's a tab on each of the ends as well as one on the bottom with a hole in the back um, that can hook on right there. So it seems to match up with this piece. And there we have a completed bench. On to page two. Uh, so page two, it begins here. You can see right here at the top, we're gonna start with this big piece here. I think this is gonna be the base of the train. Um, when this is complete, you'll actually see that it, it, it's quite a bit larger than you might expect it to be. Um, I mean, it's not massive, uh, but, the, but the kits are actually fairly good sized. Um, so we'll start with the, this bench here that we've created now. Like I said, it has three tabs here on the bottom. You'll see that they match up with the three holes down here at the bottom. And we can snap this right onto here. and it's starting to come together. Uh, for the next step, it shows that we'll actually take the other two seats that we have and instead of connecting them to a base, um, we'll actually just attach them directly to this large piece. Um, for those of you who've ridden New Texas Giant, you'll know that it has a little bit of a stadium seating um, where the front row of seats is a little bit lower than the back row. And so this helps you to accomplish that. As you can see, this front row is gonna be lower than the back row because we didn't put a base between this base and, uh, and, and the seats. And there we have all four seats now attached to the base. Um, next to these seats, we're going to be attaching the smaller side panels. Um, once again, they're laser engraved with etchings on the side. Um, so that helps you know which way these are gonna go. Um, the rounded edge is gonna go towards the front with the laser etching on the outside. Um, we'll stick that in the tab right there. Flip it around, grab the other one and attach that one as well. Next step is to add uh, the, the, the flat panel behind this bench here. Um, so we'll find that flat panel. Uh, it just has one tab on each end. May have a tab on the bottom as well. I'm, I'm checking to see if the, it does. It looks like if you look at the bottom of the base, there is a hole there. Um, so we'll just kind of drop this piece in there. And there we have the second or the, the first row of seating now completed. Um, the next step says to flip this over and you'll see now we'll be adding stuff to the bottom of, of the vehicle. Um, so this first piece is a, is a thinner piece that just happens to have two holes on it, um, which I believe to be this piece here. Um, it looks like the, the holes are, are gonna go, uh, you'll notice there, uh, there's, there's a smaller gap here at the bottom than there is at the top, and it looks like it goes that way. We'll snap this piece into place. Um, one of the nice things with these kits is most of the pieces are not able to be put on in the wrong place. They're, they're, each of the pieces are fairly unique. And so um, you really can't put most of the pieces on in the wrong place. So if it doesn't fit, don't try to force it. Um, that probably means it's in the wrong place. For the next step, um, it's showing us that we're actually gonna take these, these angled pieces here and we're gonna be attaching them to the bottom front of the train. I think these are probably gonna be part of the wheel assembly. Um, so we'll, we'll attach these here. The angled part goes on the inside with a little tab sticking out the front. And there we 
have it. Uh, that completes page two of our instruction booklet. Moving on to page three. Um, now we're gonna enclose around this piece here. Um, and it looks like we have a, a couple of pieces to do that. Um, the first one is the one that goes on top. Uh, it's gonna have these four holes, two in the middle, two kind of towards the front of the train. So that piece is gonna go right there. I'm not gonna snap it into place quite yet. Um, and then we also have a piece with no holes and just a tab on each end, uh, which I believe to be that piece right there. Um, one thing you may notice on the, some of these pieces after you pull them out is they may have like a little bit of a jagged edge. You can take a piece of sandpaper to it if you'd like. Um, I haven't found that to really be necessary. Um, however, some people do that as well. And there is that piece complete. Moving to the front of the train, and we're now gonna attach this piece to the front of the train. Um, it's simply gonna snap directly onto here. And that is complete. So moving on, the next step is to do the restraints. Um, you'll notice that we're doing this restraints times two, uh, once for the front, once for the back. Um, each set of steps is going to be for a set of two restraints. So now I have all of the restraint pieces laid out here in front of me. Uh, really not a lot of steps to these. Um, you'll notice the bars for the restraints look like that. Uh, the handles for the restraints look like that. And then there's also the shin guards uh, as well. So um, we'll start by taking uh, just, just the handle here or the, the, the bar and we'll slip on the handle here. Um, once again, some of these pieces do have some, some laser etched design. You wanna make sure you have that facing out so that that's visible. Um, so we have that there and then we have uh, the shin restraint here. We'll simply snap that uh, in, into place. Uh, once, once you put this together, um, once you add these to the vehicle, you want the, this angled part of the restraint towards the middle. Um, so we'll actually finish this pair with the restraint. Um, and now you'll notice we have uh, two restraints there um, with the angle pieces towards the center. Um, and then we'll attach these on to the right vehicle. Uh, well, we'll pull the vehicle out here. Um, in front of the, the front seats, you'll notice that there are still four holes down there. Um, two of these are for the restraints. Uh, so I can take the, the, these first restraints and simply snap them in. And then there are your front restraints. Uh, moving on to the back restraints, we'll, we'll assemble them exactly the same way. And then moving backwards, um, I, I just noticed here that I missed a step. Um, you'll notice there's no panel there in the middle uh, to attach the restraints for the rear vehicle. Um, this was back on the previous page. I don't know how I missed it. Um, but right here you'll see we're going to be adding uh, three pieces around. We already have the, the piece added in the back. Um, we'll be adding those two pieces. Oh yeah, we'll be adding the third one there as well. And then we'll be adding the panel there uh, that these restraints will be attaching to. Um, so now we have the bottom of the vehicle here again. Um, we'll be grabbing uh, these, these little angled pieces here with the tab on top and we'll be attaching them right here. Um, if, we, if we match the vehicle up here, uh, the tabs will actually, uh, on the top will actually go towards the back of the vehicle. So we'll leave them just like that um, on both sides. And then the other piece we'll be using um, is just this thin piece here that has the two tabs and the one notch. Um, and this one, once again, will be attaching to the bottom of the vehicle as well, um, creating a little bit of a platform here. And then we have the piece here that the actual restraints are going to attach to. Um, and then we'll snap this one into place as well. Um, once again, like I said, most of these pieces can only fit in one place. Um, you'll notice we have a tab there, tab there, tab there. There's three tabs on here. Um, so you know exactly which direction this is going to face. We'll get that simply snapped into place. And now we can move on to where we were and get these restraints added to the vehicle as well. Uh, you'll notice right here, this is the, the step where we're gonna add these restraints to the vehicle. Uh, once again, the, the shin guards 
are gonna be angled on towards the inside. Um, we'll simply just grab one of these here, press it down. Uh, piece came off a little bit down here at the bottom, so we're gonna push that back up. Um, now we can push this down into place. That's locked in. Same with the other one. Make sure everything is tight here. Um, it all looks good. Um, so there's your, your four seats with the, the restraints installed as well now. Um, now we're gonna be moving on to the wheel assemblies. I think we can set that aside for a second. Um, you'll see here's the steps for the, for the beginning of the wheel assembly. It starts with step number 20. Um, we'll first find this piece here. Um, this is what the wheel assembly is gonna start hooking onto. Um, and then we'll find the correct wheel pieces to hook onto there. To begin, um, we're gonna be using these pieces here that have the two wheels and then the tab. Um, when you attach these, uh, they're actually going to slide into this groove here in the middle. You want to make sure that you have the laser etched side towards the top um, so that that's visible. Um, the bottom of the train is not really visible, so they, none of the pieces are etched on, the, on both sides. Um, and so you'll, you'll really only be able to see um, on one side. Uh, this is semi-difficult to push in, uh, but we'll get it in there. Okay, it's, it's slid in now. Um, same thing with the other side. Uh, we'll grab one of these as well. Slide that one into place. And we have those two wheels assembled now as well. Um, on, the, on the sides, we're gonna be attaching two wheel pieces. Um, the first one is this larger one that has the, the square block at the top. That one's gonna be snapping up on here to the top. And then at the bottom, uh, we simply have this one that has the, the two wheels. Um, if we look at the, the very bottom, you'll notice here at the very bottom, there's this little wood tab. Um, that's actually gonna face down. So. Uh, that's going to go right onto there, just like that. And so that's what your completed one side of the wheel assembly should look like. Uh, moving on to the other side, uh, we're going to do exactly the same thing. Uh, put the large one at the top, grab the small one with a little tap at the bottom, and snap that onto the bottom. And there you have uh, completed through step 21, uh, the wheel assembly along with three sets of wheels. Uh, step 22 is going to uh, begin the next step of the wheel assembly here. Um, we're going to start with this piece here. Um, you'll notice these pieces are actually a lot larger than you may think they are based on looking at the paper. Um, but we're going to need both of these pieces here as well as this piece here in the middle to connect them. Um, so we'll take uh, just one of these long pieces here, doesn't matter which side. We'll simply take this, this smaller thin piece and snap it into place. Um, and then match up this, the, this other piece on the other side. Um, you want these ones to actually go the same direction. And so you'll have uh, that piece right there. Moving on to the next page. Uh, this is where our two wheel assemblies are gonna be connected. Um, you'll notice I, I completed the one wheel assembly. Uh, the other wheel assembly should have been completed the, exactly the same way. I'm actually gonna do that one right now. Um, and then we'll, we'll attach them to this runner piece. So I mentioned earlier in the video, um, some people need wood glue occasionally, um, and I, I haven't previously on, this, on any of these kits. Um, however, um, if you look really closely here, you'll notice um, as I was pushing this piece on, the wood actually split. Um, and so right there, it's actually, that piece is gonna be a little bit loose there. Um, so I'm actually gonna apply a little bit of wood glue onto the kit uh, to help hold that into place. Um, so I got, I got my handy wood glue here. Um, just get a little bit there. I may have gotten a little bit too much. I'm gonna just get a, a nail here and uh, kind, of, kind of spread that around um, on, on both sides of it. And then we'll actually wipe away uh, just some of the excess wood glue here um, that, that we got on here. Um, now for this wood glue to fully dry, it is gonna take some time. Um, however, I'm, I'm gonna continue assembling this, just being ex extra careful around this piece uh, to, make, to make sure that I don't cause any further damage to it. Um, but that piece should hold now. Um, so we'll just we'll put that right there. Um, and then we'll move on. Uh, to attaching the, the two wheel assemblies, once again, like I said, to this piece here. Um, we'll start with the, the wheel assembly. Uh, that's Actually, we'll start with the one that's cracked and put that one towards the back of the vehicle here. Um, so simply 
So to do this, you'll just uh, take these two grooves here on the bottom of the wheel assembly, and they'll fit into the two grooves here onto this piece here. Line that up. and push that into place. Um, some of these pieces are a pretty tight fit, which is really what you want when you're assembling something like this. You don't want it to just simply fall apart. Um, same thing here up in the front. Um, once again, two grooves here, two grooves on here. We'll push those into place. And we'll apply some pressure down here on the table. Um, and then there is the completed wheel assembly carriage. Um, the next step is we're going to start assembling uh, the front of the train. Um, really, this is where the theming is on the hood of the vehicle. Um, so the six flags license plate, the hood, and all that stuff. So to start with this, we'll grab the base plate here, and then the next piece is the piece that has the six flags license plate, like I said, um, as well as two lights. Um, this is simply gonna snap on to the front of the base here. just like that. Um, at the end, you'll see that there's gonna be two little pieces here, um, each with two little tabs on them. Um, once again, these are laser etched, and so you'll actually wanna make sure that the laser etching matches up as you go around the corner. Um, you'll notice there's a laser etched line on the front of the bumper here um, that continues around the corner. Uh, so as we attach this piece here, we'll attach it in the right direction so that that line continues right around the corner. Uh, same thing on the other side. Attach this, once again, tabs up, and then the line continues around the corner of the piece. On the top of here, we'll have this piece that's a little bit shaped, um, kind of like the, the vehicle. Um, snap that onto, okay, moving on. Uh, we have this piece here that's shaped a little bit like the vehicle. Um, it has two indentations as well as two uh, holes in here. Um, the indentations are actually going to hook onto the tab here. Um, so we'll, if you look here, we'll, we'll just attach these here. Also, there's the tabs on the end that the, the top of the little bumper pieces are going to snap into as well um, to start holding that in place, give it a little bit more structural integrity um, and keep that held together. Um, next, we have the side panels that go up here on the front. Uh, these are going to snap on uh, directly uh, to the, this base plate. Um, and then the edge of the bumper is actually going to wrap around uh, on the inside of this. Snap that into place. Uh, same thing with the one on the other side. Snap that into place. Once again, the bumper is going to wrap around on the edge. Um, and now we have uh, the, the side panels there for the vehicle. There's going to be a structural piece here. Um, it's just pretty plain, simple. It's going to snap onto the back of these two panels to hold them into place, make sure that they're not moving around very much. And hold that into place. Now, we're going to be adding uh, the headlight panel here. Um, so the headlight panel has a few different steps. Um, first of all, we're just gonna attach it to the vehicle here. Um, drop it down into these two tabs on the top of the, the bumper piece. Um, but then we also have uh, the headlights. Um, the headlights have uh, some structural pieces inside. So you'll notice we have these, these little U-shaped pieces um, right here. So these are actually gonna pop in through the back of the headlight panel so that we have tabs sticking out the front. So we'll slide that into place. Um, now you'll see we have tabs there. Um, I'll do that with each of these. And now we have the four tabs there on the front for the four headlights. Um, the headlight pieces are simply these little round pieces. Um, with the little square in the middle. Um, you'll also notice, once again, there's some laser etching on there. You wanna make sure that that's facing out to give it a little bit of texture to the vehicle. And we're now gonna just snap this on to those four uh, tabs that were created by sticking the U-pieces through the back. And then the last step right here is to add the hood to the top of this. Um, once again, laser etching line down the middle of the hood. Um, we're simply going to snap this on to the top. And as you can see, it's now starting to take shape and look like the right vehicle. Uh, flip it over to the next page. Uh, we need to add the little horns. 
Uh, as everyone knows, New Texas Giant has these horns on the front of the vehicle. Um, we'll add those there. Flip the vehicle over. Uh, on the bottom, we're going to actually be taking these little wooden triangle pieces. Um, these pieces don't actually attach to uh, the ride vehicle. If you look at the instructions, it shows that you have them spaced evenly between the three holes. Um, however, there's no way for them to attach. Uh, they're most likely gonna be held on uh, by the wheel assembly here. If we look at the next step, um, the wheel assembly is actually gonna attach to the front here um, on the end that has the three tabs, and then there's the two little grooves there. I'm actually just gonna drop these uh, triangle pieces down into those grooves and get them uh, leveled off there. So that's just gonna add a little bit of structural integrity to this, um, but that's really gonna help us get it lined up properly. Um, and then the front of the vehicle is going to attach to those three tabs. So now we have the front of the vehicle there attached to the wheel assembly. Um, the next step is going to be to attach uh, the seats from the vehicle to the wheel assembly as well. Um, and this is actually gonna attach in a few different places. You'll notice that there's the two pegs here as well as two pegs here. Um, and then out of the bottom of here, there's a few holes. Um, so those pegs are going to attach into Okay, we're actually gonna take this a, a few steps back here. Um, there were a few things that I, I, I didn't notice uh, when, when we were doing this earlier, um, and that caused me to put a few pieces on incorrectly. Um, so we're actually going to uh, detach the, the full wheel assembly here um, from the runner boards. Um, And when you're detaching this, you wanna make sure you're being very careful. You don't wanna break the wood if you don't have to. Um, but once again, we're gonna be detaching uh, the wheel assemblies from the, this long runner here. Um, and in a moment, I'll show you why. Um, I, I didn't notice earlier that the, the wheel assemblies were different. You'll notice the one has the three tabs on the top, the other one doesn't. Um, the one with the three tabs is the one that the front of the vehicle hooks to, and it also needs to be at the lower end um, of uh, this runner board here. Uh, so once again, like I said, I'm going to be detaching this. And now we will be taking uh, the, the piece with the three tabs here at the top and sliding that on the front. And then taking the other wheel assembly and attaching it to the back. Um, so now we have that there. Um, once again, we can take the front of the vehicle, slide it onto uh, these three tabs here at the front. And now uh, we have the, the two holes in the two base plates where the uh, restraints were attached. Um, those will actually line up directly with these four tabs. Uh, once again, with, the, with it switched around, they didn't line up, um, but now they're gonna line up directly there and we'll be able to attach this on. get those completely snapped down into place. Um, and there you have uh, the, basically the completed ride vehicle. Um, like I said, really cool build. Uh, shows a lot of detail from the actual train. Um, and it also has a little bit more creativity. Uh, the nano coasters are, are definitely very cool. Um, however, if you want to show something that's a little bit more detailed, um, also maybe a little bit easier to, to assemble, um, this kit may be for you. Uh, the nano coasters, they're a little bit more difficult to bend and shape. There's no shaping with this one. Um, as you saw throughout, you can definitely put a couple pieces in the wrong places, um, but those are typically fixed pretty easily. Um, for the most part, this is holding together pretty well. Even the piece that I had to, to glue this wheel assembly right down here is holding together pretty, pretty well. Um, and then the last step is to assemble the stand. Uh, the stand is just four simple pieces here. Um, you'll have the new Texas Giant right there. Um, it doesn't have the, the Six Flags Over Texas logo as it shows on the box. It does have the new Texas Giant logo. Um, and then you have uh, these three other pieces here as well. Um, so the base of this stand is really simple. You take this triangle piece, you slide it up into the, the stand, and you'll snap these down into place onto the base. This other piece here is to help you stabilize the vehicle at the top. Um, so we'll actually just attach that right there. Um, down here at the bottom of the vehicle, you'll notice right there in the middle of the, the rails, uh, there's two little holes. Um, we'll simply snap 
the vehicle into place there. Gives you a really cool uh, base to display this on. Uh, you gotta push down a little bit harder. Uh, sometimes it's, once you get to this point, it's a little bit hard to, to find places you can press down on, um, but you can get it there. Uh, so there is the completed New Texas Giant Coaster Cutouts. Uh, once again, from Print My Ride, also distributed by Coaster Dynamics. Um, really cool kit. These are available at Six Flags over Texas or online. Uh, the price was $37.99. Um, if you buy it at the park and you have a membership or a pass, you may be entitled to a discount on that as well. Um, or you can purchase it from merch.sixflags.com. Um, there are other uh, coaster cutouts as well. As you notice, I had the, the full train of dueling dragons behind me. Um, that one's available from coasterdynamics.com directly. Um, stay tuned to the next video where I'm actually going to be painting this model. Um, so this is where the instructions end and, and the fun really begins. Um, but it allows you to really uh, make the, the, the model pop and, and really show what it looks like. Um, so yeah, stay tuned to the next video. So thanks for tuning into this video. If you wanna see other videos where I'm putting together coaster cutouts or nano coasters, I just completed a, a coaster trip and I brought home seven nano coasters. So we'll be putting those together here in, this, in the near future. Make sure you subscribe. Um, if you like this button, hit the like button. If you don't like the video, that's fine as well. Um, but see you next time.